Welcome to Real Physics. This is about the Machian Gravity Meeting recently held in Bonn with Dennis Brown, Jonathan Fay, Jan Preuss and myself. The talks and discussions are a little bit more technical than usual, thus if you're interested in the details I encourage you to look up my Variable Speed of Light playlist or the papers linked in this video. Enjoy watching! <laughs> I'm not in heaven. So you re scare the rest of us in the room and the camera. Yes, exactly. I re scare the rest of us. I'm re scaring us right now, the, the whole universe. It would be sufficient to re scare the camera. <laughs> So, 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 what was what was the question that, that uh, you, uh, you you were, were pointing out a, a, a basic misconception underlying, uh, I guess, both general relativity or even conventional gravity or mechanics in general. Yes. So, I, I guess the mm -hmm. the kinetic energy was one of the yes. laws you called it. So, if you just can pinpoint this, your oh, critique. Sure. Yes, I mean it has to do with the uh, with the uh, transformations that we just uh, wrote down, uh, that it is not invariant under those. Uh, so the kinetic energy uh, in uh, common Newtonian physics is just something like m i half, uh, half times v squared, and we said that a Machian theory needs to be invariant under arbitrary transformations of this form. Where A is some orthogonal matrix times R plus G, which has an arbitrary time dependence. And uh, a Lagrangian, which is dependent on this kinetic energy or which is built with this kinetic energy, is not invariant under this. Uh, not even under this, because it, not even if G equals uh, velocity times T because then only the whole action is invariant under, uh, up, on, uh, up to some uh, total time derivative. But I think this is really some kind of mathematical nonsense to say that a, a Lagrange function just must stay invariant up to some total time derivative. I think it must be a complete invariant. And this is exactly why uh, Newtonian dynamics is uh, unable to um, account for the fictitious forces. Because the fictitious forces uh, just come out if you make the um, uh, Lagrangian completely invariant under these transformations. Then it produces the fictitious forces. Otherwise you have to postulate them when you go into a rotating or an accelerating frame. But trying to make that that less technical is this more or less Marx critique that the kinetic energy should depend on relative velocities and this is yes. the only thing that makes sense in the universe exactly. and there is no absolute frame or is there yes. more to it? No, exactly. This is Marx critique because the potential energy, if you consider the gravitational potential, it already fulfills Marx requirement because it only depends on the relative distances. So this I write it without the gravitational constant. Uh, this is invariant under this. Yeah. Because it is invariant under arbitrary rotations, a distance is not, is, it remains invariant if you rotate it. And it is also invariant under arbitrary translations because you only have the relative distances down here. So this fulfills this requirement, but this does not. And so it's the law of inertia is related to the kinetic energy. Yeah, exactly. Question, where exactly. Is the the yes. gravitation is related to the to potential. Yes. I mean, it, that the, the way the gravitation comes in is a little bit different, but you could also do what Linden and Katz did and just fix it by doing this in my J squared. So uh, this is not invariant under rotations, but this was the second step, which I presented yesterday with the uh, minus omega times R by J and so on, mm -hmm. to make it invariant under rotations. This is the paper of Linton Bennett Katz. Mm -hmm. They did not put in the gravitation here, this is why they are not able to cross out the gravitational constant, 
uh, and explain the inertia of gravitational origin, mm -hmm. but this would already work to um, make it invariant under these transformations and to um, yes reply to Mach's critique. So it does Mach's principle and his hypothesis, but it doesn't do the what I'm calling the Reister shower. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And then already in, uh, in Lind, Bell and Katz theory, also the fictitious forces come out correctly. So if you go into an accelerating frame, then you gain the additional inertial force uh, by itself. And you do not have to postulate it. You just cannot explain it as of gravitational origin. And you're saying this misconception translates into general relativity. Yes. It's not yes. fixed. It's, it's something that... Yes. Because it generalizes the wrong theory, so to say. Or it generalizes it is the wrong way. I mean, yeah. Yeah, also the wrong theory. It starts from the wrong theory because it mm -hmm. should start at least from this. Mm -hmm. I would argue even from this. Okay. Yeah, but, but in, I mean, special relativity, from special relativity, you have this arising basically just from E uh, equals mc squared and you have then replaced this by uh, 1 over v squared over c squared and then you expand the Taylor series and yes you get out this one half so um, yes but this, this is wrong is also this would be also wrong yeah this does this also depends on absolute quantities you have a single mass here and you have an absolute velocity there mm -hmm. uh, so you have the same flaw which is present here is of course still present here. I see. Because the higher powers, they change nothing at the basic misconception of this one. Mm -hmm. So the problem is even bigger than yes. most people think. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. That's a good statement, I guess. <laughs> so the problem really is a Newtonian mechanics already. <laughs> <laughs>